you gay muzzle! <laughs> my Union Jack mug is in the dishwasher, so this is my standby, a fantastic charity shop find, 50p. You get some fantastic mugs in charity shops. Alcohol. Alcoholism. A aspect of my journey that I don't speak about that often. For a few reasons. One, because it's one of those aspects of my journey that the more I think about it, the more I talk about it, the more I feel like I'm being pulled back into the past and the more I feel those feelings of regret, remorse, shame, all of the negative things that can arise when we ruminate on the past too much begin to surface. And it's about moving on. It's about leaving the past in the past. It's about drawing a line and just moving straight forward, as we will come to see with the technique that I'm going to describe. So, primarily this technique can be used for alcohol or any drug, but as we'll come to see, it's a very interesting way of also beginning to recognise negative mind patterns and beginning to recognise the negative voice in the head that doesn't necessarily always know what's best for you or have your best interest at heart, um, and how to deal with this and how to overcome this. So, to start with, just to paint a bit of a picture, um, I'm just going to actually throw up some pictures here of where I was at, and this is me circa 2013, 2012, 24, I don't know, around about that time. <laughs> and um, yeah, as you can see from some of these pictures, not a very happy bunny, and I kept hold of this vest because um, I'm wearing it in quite a few of those when, uh, yeah, things were a bit different for me back then. It's a nice reminder, it fits a lot better now. <laughs> but this isn't a muscle video. <laughs> this is a video about recovery from alcoholism, personal development, and how to move forward from things as potentially, potentially life-destroying as addiction. And how do we deal with this very difficult very, very tricky problem that has plagued mankind since day one. Since day one, this problem has been going on, and it's the problem of addiction. But do not despair. By the end of this video, I will outline a perfectly simple, perfectly easy, perfectly practicable technique that can end your addiction Today, today, right now, instantly, we can, we can end it right here. So I say, I used to be an alcoholic. I did, I used to be an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic now because I don't drink. I don't even say that I'm a recovering alcoholic because then you're identifying still as an alcoholic. I don't drink and that's the end of that. And we're going to come to see that these definitions and these words are quite important. So I used to suffer with alcoholism. And just to paint this picture for you. About seven years ago, I wake up about midday. My hands shaking. Shaking uncontrollably. I was hallucinating, see dark figures, demonic faces in the corners of the room, couldn't get my thoughts together. I stumble out of bed and I have to peel the covers back because they're so drenched in sweat, dripping sweat. I'm lumbering my obese 120 kilo frame to the bathroom. And I'm knocking over half-empty cider cans as I go, kicking them over, stumbling, trying to rush, but I'm shaking so much that it's a, a struggle not to fall over. I make it to the bathroom, and I'm throwing up, and I realise with horror that a lot of this vomit is blood. I looked in the mirror, 
and I see these bloodshot eyes looking back at me and I don't recognise the face. My skin is bright red, my eyes are bloodshot, I'm beginning to yellow. And a chill went down my spine because I realised that I was close to the gate. That if I didn't sort it out rapidly, I was going to die. And this prospect had always kind of been at the back of my mind whilst I was addicted. And, uh, you know, one day this, this alcohol could kill me, sure. But now it had arrived at the door. It was right there in front of me. If I don't sort it out now, if I don't sort it out rapidly, it's going to be curtains. And that's a very, very real prospect. A couple of weeks after that, I'm sat in a doctor's office and I'm still shaking. I'd booked an appointment because I was real worried. And they'd taken some blood blood samples and she was reading off the results. And the tone of her voice was a tone that I haven't heard before or since in a doctor. And it's quite a difficult emotion to describe because usually doctors are very sort of supportive or well, they're kind of concerned but they're kind of like they have a manner about them but this was different she was serious she was really serious and she was listing off what the blood work had said my liver was beginning to cirrhosis it was enlarged it was fatty as they say so the alcohol had damaged the liver to the point it was enlarged inflamed and was full of uh, fatty deposits and was beginning to scar which is ir irreversible kidneys were shot um, my cholesterol was sky high um, my blood pressure was type um, was in the second stage of hypertension um, my resting heart rate was about a hundred beating away it was it was fluttering away whilst I was even sat there in the doctor's office and um, I was depressed, anxious, obviously, all of these things that come along with it. And I was sat there. She read all of this off and I said, um, it's not good, is it? <laughs> I should laugh, but that was, <laughs> that's not good, is it? That's not a, not a good report that you're, <laughs> you're reading off there. She was saying, Corin, this is. This is not the blood work of a 28 year old man and um, this is this is really bad this is really serious and something changed something changed I thought this isn't going to be the end of me this will not be the end of me things are going to change and I don't know how I don't know how I'm going to turn it around not yet but I'm going to find a way and I'm going to turn this around because I'm not having this again. I am not going to be sat in a doctor's office again with a doctor looking at me with a mix of pity, concern, and there, is there revulsion in there maybe? I'm, I'm not being that person anymore. I'm not going to be this drain on resources. I'm not going to be this negative influence, a problem that needs to be fixed. I thought, this stops now. Fast forward. That's the universal noise for fast forwarding. We fast forward seven years. To these days. These days, I wake up about 6am and I'm often lacing up my trainers going out for a run. I'm full of energy, full of joy, full of vibrance. Um, I'm eating good food. I'm eating that good nutrition. Uh, and it's not just total diet the whole time. I'm eating my pizzas just and burgers just as much as the next person. <laughs> burger's my favourite food, actually. A little side note there. Good burger. Um, my body fat percentage is around, hovers around between 14, 17%, maybe 20% on a bad day, but whatever. 
uh, between 40 and 20 percent back then it was about 40 percent body fat I was, I was type 2 obese back then now my weight is about 85 kilos which puts me in the healthy range for my height and weight body fat between 14 and 17 depends who you ask or <laughs> what i'm using to measure um resting heart rate of about 50 my watch says whether that's right or not that's that's good that's really low with a vo2 max of around between 55 and 60. hmm so what happened what happened in that time oh and also <laughs> now the bit that i should mention completely sober completely sober um i don't drink I don't often get the, what we will call the addictive voice, um, what is called the addictive voice, coming up that often, every now and then, sure, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk you through how we deal with that, um, and I don't drink, and it's not a problem, um, and it doesn't come up, and I don't go to any support groups, I don't go to AA or anything like that. And I'd like to talk a little bit. So in, in previous videos, I've talked more about the sort of the weight loss and the exercise and how I changed my mindset in in relation to the exercise and the nutrition and just getting my head together around those sorts of areas. But this time I'd like to focus primarily. Well, I'd like to focus entirely on the alcohol on how I stopped drinking because back then I was on 30 cans of cider a day and make no mistake about this make no mistake I'm, I wasn't just somebody who maybe had a few too many drinks at the weekend oh my don't know what happened there needed to delete a few things off my phone tinder's always the first thing to go eh so <laughs> I'll get to the technique in just a second, but I just wanted to highlight just how bad it was for me. So I'm not somebody who was just having a few too many beers at the weekend or just occasionally having a few too many. I was drinking from waking up 6am, 7am, straight onto the cider. I was that guy stood outside off licences, hands shaking, waiting for it to open. I've lost jobs due to alcoholism. I've lost relationships due to alcoholism. It's as, as bad as it gets. I've been on hospital beds, going through withdrawal. As bad as it gets. And I, I don't say anything, it's, it's not to be like dark or edgy, but I'm just trying to highlight that I did have as severe a form as, of alcoholism as it's possible to get. And today, completely sober and it's simply not an issue and this is important because there tends to be this background idea of well once an alcoholic always an alcoholic and you'll never be fully rid of it load of rubbish load of rubbish you can be free of it today today you can be rid of your addiction whatever your addiction is it could be any drug it could be alcohol it could be overeating whatever your addiction is we can eradicate it today today right here right now now this is primarily for people who want to stop their addiction but are struggling they want to end their addiction but they're seeking a way to do it because they they've tried and it's not, something's not adding up, something's not clicking. That's who this technique is for, that's who this video is for. If you don't want to stop, I don't have anything for you. I'm not here to try and convince you to stop drinking alcohol. Nobody can, nobody can. It's your choice. It really is your choice. And if you don't want to seek an alcohol addiction, or you don't even think you have a problem, only you can make that call. Only you can make that call. 
It's not that any nobody else can tell you. Maybe just carry on, whatever. Maybe it's there at the back of your mind. And I can see you back here some of the time. Some of the time. But if you don't want to stop, I'm not here to convince you to stop. However, if you do want to stop, and you've tried various things, but you're really struggling with it, that's when I have something for you here. Now, when I first tried to stop drinking, I went completely um, cold turkey, and I did what's known as white knuckling which is where I didn't have any, any support at all. I wasn't really seeking any support other than the doctors, and they did have me on medication for anxiety and depression, things like that, and it did help. But I wasn't seeking any, um, any guidance, and um, I would manage about three, four weeks without drinking, and then I would uh, drink again. And it was incredibly frustrating, and I was very depressed with this because I felt completely out of control. And I didn't understand. I didn't understand what was happening in my mind. It felt like I was very sincere and I really did want to stop. But then something would happen and I would feel like my alcoholism was triggered by an external external factor or an external force. And we will, we, as we will come to see, this is false. This is false. It's an illusion. It's an illusion, but we'll get into that. And eventually, I found an online support forum called Sober Recovery. And um, thank God that I did, because it was an immediate lift in my mood when I encountered people who were struggling with something that I was struggling with. Nobody else in my life was struggling with this. So to just know that other people are out there who struggle with this, that was massive. That was massive. And immediately there was a big sense of relief and a release. And I joined one of these, the support uh, forum. And <laughs> so my username on there was Lonely Shadow. Well, it still is Lonely Shadow. I don't use it now, but Lonely Shadow. So maybe there's somebody out there who um, who remembers me from that site or that time. <laughs> I don't know. But um, everyone was sharing their methods of support and their techniques for being sober and sharing their ideas and things that they were struggling with and their challenges and I opened up about all of my struggles and my challenges and wow wow was there a change in my mentality because often the people around you aren't able to support you with this because they're not going to understand they're just not going to be able to and because they don't understand because they're not able to help, it's going to feel to you like they're not supporting you and it'll feel like they're doing this on purpose. They're not. But by seeking out people who had experienced similar, I felt much better straight away. However, many people were recommending AA, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, and I went to an AA meeting and it just didn't sit right with me. There's just something about it that did not align with my native beliefs and values. But I'm not disparaging or discouraging AA. If that works for you, it works for you, and that's fantastic. But it's not the only game in town. Long story short, I found a book called Rational Recovery. By Jack Trimpe. Trimpe? Trimpe. Jack Trimp. T R I M P E Y. Jack Trimpe or Jack Trimpe? <laughs> the guy wrote a book that saved my life and I don't know how to pronounce his name. That's, that's bad, isn't it? <laughs> Jack Trimpe. Jack Trimpe. Anyway, the book is called Rational Recovery. A New Cure for Substance Addiction. And this book changed my life. This book saved my life. In this book, it outlines a technique known as addictive voice recognition technique. And I'm going to explain this now. I'm going to go into this now. 
exactly how it works and exactly how you can apply it to end your addiction today. So, addictive voice recognition technique. Addictive voice recognition technique. What is it and how does it work? And we're actually going to do this now. We're actually going to practice this now. The clue is in the title. We are going to recognize something called the addictive voice. And already, already, you might start to feel a little bit uncomfortable with this. You might start to already feel a little psychological or emotional resistance to this idea and start thinking, oh yeah, good, good idea, but um, we might watch this video later. Or maybe, yeah, it, it sounds okay what you're saying, but no, 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 let's, um, da, 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 and you're trying to sort of move away, but stay with it. Stay with me on this because we can end your addiction today. We can do it today and it's all done with this incredibly simple technique. So, with me, with me, say to yourself, I will never drink again and I will never change my mind. Say this to yourself now. I will never drink again and I will never change my mind. You can say this out loud, or you can say it internally to yourself. I will never drink again, and I will never change my mind. Really mean it. Now, obviously, obviously, we have a reaction to this. And addictive voice recognition technique is listening to the reaction. Listen to the reaction. Listen to what your mind responds to that statement with. Now, I'd be willing to bet that your first reaction was something along the lines of, it's not that simple, or, um, <laughs> or you've said that before. I've, I've told myself before, I'm never going to drink again. When you've woke up hungover, I'm never going to drink again. And then you go back to drinking at some point. So when you say to yourself, I will never drink again, and I will never change my mind, what we believe to be our rational mind responds with, oh, it's not that simple. Oh, it's not as easy as all that. Oh, he doesn't understand. Oh, it's different from me. Oh, you've said that before and you just went straight back to it. Oh, no, I'm genetically an alcoholic. I have the alcoholism gene. I have the alcohol condition. It's not as simple as just saying, oh, I'll never do it again. Oh, what if I say I'll never drink again and then I do drink again and then I'm going to feel really bad about myself then? Uh, what if? What about? Well, I don't know. What about Christmas? What about my birthday? What about? Uh, what am I going to do? Right. All of that reaction is your addictive voice. It is your addiction. It's not you. It's not you. Say it again. I will never drink again. And I will never change my mind. When the reaction comes up, just watch. Don't get involved. Don't disagree. Don't agree. Just watch. See what it's saying. You are now looking directly at your addiction. Simple, right? Simple. I will never drink again, and I will never change my mind. And notice how the reaction keeps changing. So it might go, oh, it's not that simple to start with. Or, oh, well, you say that now, but okay. But then it switches tactic and goes, oh, okay, yeah, no, that's, that's good. I mean, other than birthdays and Christmas, obviously, because, um, yeah. D uh. The addictive voice is any thought feeling, emotion, idea, or opinion, or belief that supports the idea of you drinking again, that supports the idea of you continuing your addiction. So it comes up with loads and loads of different, this is how the addiction speaks to you. This is how the addiction appeals to your rational mind. It says you need alcohol in order to uh, manage your depression. You drink because you're unhappy. 
you drink because to socialize you drink because of your background you drink because of your genetics you'll never be free of it um alcoholics are, are always alcoholics and even if you even if you're not currently drinking while well, you're still an alcoholic and um yeah you'll just drink again it's, it's like any of these thoughts all of them that come up all of them all of those sorts of thoughts that support the idea of drinking again in future maintaining your addiction is your addictive voice ignore it just ignore it you recognize it's there don't get involved go do something else because you know that your addiction is destroying your life and you know that your addiction is making you utterly utterly miserable miserable and you don't deserve to live like that and you don't have to live like that and you shouldn't live like that you know this you know this and it's not to say, oh, it's all in your head, because the addictive voice, because you haven't recognised it for so long, you come to believe that it's you. You come to identify with it and believe that it's just you. And it's exhausting. It's exhausting, it's depressing, it's harrowing, and it's utterly life-destroying. But now, with this technique, addictive voice recognition technique, you begin to separate yourself. You begin to take a step back in your own mind and see what's happening here. There are many people who do this kind of naturally. They just, they've just kind of learnt this process kind of off their own accord. They've just become aware that there are, there's like a voice in their head that doesn't really seem to know what's best. And everybody's experienced this because have you ever been on a diet or something like that and you're like, ah, oh, Right, diet, I'm on, I'm on my diet, it starts now, and you're at a party or something, and you see a bit of cake, and you're like, ooh, that's my favourite cake, it's got the nice chocolate and everything, it's just, it's exactly the sort of cake that's just your, just a bit of you, that, and you go, no, 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 I'm on a diet, and this is where we feel like we split into two, we go, no, 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 I'm on a diet, and the mind goes, yeah, but come on, you're at a party, and you go, no, 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 I'm, no, I'm on a diet. He goes, yeah, but, you know, just one slice won't hurt. This is classic. This is classic addictive voice. In addiction, it will go, oh, just one beer. Oh, just Friday. I mean, you can you can recover later. You're going through a stressful time at the moment. So um, you can recover maybe next month when things settle down a little bit. Or maybe, um, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, we'll do, we'll do that addictive voice recognition technique thing for a bit and uh, see how it goes, and then we'll, we'll see about it. It's like, this is just the addictive voice, and don't, wouldn't it be nice to just end your addiction now? Wouldn't it be nice to stop going through all of this? Your, your, they sometimes say your higher self, it sounds a little bit, it sounds a little bit spiritual, but it's your, your more reasonable and your more rational self knows that this is nonsense that if you to stop you just stop if you're doing something that's harming you wouldn't it be a good idea to knock it on the head to stop it forever and all of this talk what your addictive voice right now will be raging at me raging at me because we're directly taking a look at it now but if you're sincere if you are sincere in wanting to stop, you will be feeling such a huge sense of relief. Ah, oh, it's that simple. It's that simple. And it really is. I can't, I can't get across that there's no, there's no trickery afoot here. It really is as simple as you, you recognise every time the addictive voice says, yeah, but just one can't hurt. Well, we know that's a lie, don't we? We know that's a lie. Or... What about your birthday? What about your birthday? S sober. Have your birthday sober. Or when it says, oh yeah, but you need alcohol to enjoy your life. It's rubbish. Rubbish. Absolute nonsense. The addictive voice has never helped you. Never. It has never helped you. Pit. Recognise it. Awareness is the first step. It's also the last step. <laughs> Just awareness. 
awareness, awareness, awareness. Just begin to learn about your own mind processes. Begin to learn about yourself and begin to move this forward. And any doom and gloom that comes up in your mind, oh, it's going to be a long process. Oh, I'm going to, how am I going to struggle with this for the rest of my life? That is the addictive voice. It presents sobriety as this long, grueling journey and I'll, oh, I'm so sick and I'll never, I'll never be able to do it. And, oh, it's going to be so hard and rubbish. It can end today. It can end now. And you're free free, liberated, to go about your life and enjoy. My life has just been amazing, amazing this last seven years of just this growth and the energy and optimism and hope and love and compassion and vibrance and physical training and just filling life with good things, just good, nutritious, virtuous things, just, just living a good life. And the addictive voice says, no, you can't have that. You can't have that. The addictive voice, it came for me, it came for everyone. Everyone who's attempted to turn their life around, to, to end their addiction and their negative habits, their negative ways, the addictive voice will come. And it will come in so many different methods. It will, it will come threatening and say, no, you need it in order to survive. And then it will come seductively and say yeah but come on let's have a party it's gonna be fun it will come in many different ways and it doesn't know any better so i'm going to explain a little that's avrt i'm going to explain a little bit now why this is happening because obviously you're going to have some questions which is absolutely fine fantastic and very healthy to have some questions about this so allow me to just explain a little more about why this process is happening Still with me? If you're feeling uncomfortable right now, it's because the AV, the addictive voice, is, is chattering away, saying, no, 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 it's not as simple as this. You've got you to gotta stop this video now. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> it's so obvious once you look at it. It's so obvious when you see what's happening. So... What is the addictive voice? Where is it coming from? There's an older part of the brain called the midbrain, which is a very ancient part of the brain. It's like the lizard part of the brain. It's sometimes called the limbic system. And it's involved in survival. And it releases all of those feel-good chemicals whenever we are taking action that we believe is going to either increase our chances of survival or reproduction. So it feels good when we eat because the limbic system is going, good job. It feels good <laughs> when, when you sleep with someone because the limbic system goes, hey good, reproduction. It feels nice when we're comfortable and under our duvet and in comfortable surroundings because we're safe, survival. So we get all those feel-good chemicals coming on in. At some point, in addicted people, people who are addicted to a substance, the limbic system has gotten a little bit confused. Because the drug, alcohol or any drug, releases dopamine, because it releases that feel-good chemical, the limbic system has come to believe that it's necessary for survival, which is why the AV speaks so convincingly and why it feels like you don't have a choice. You feel like alcohol is as necessary as food, as shelter, as comfort, as safety, social security. Your limbic system has gotten confused and believes that alcohol is as important as these things. And so that's why these images come up so strong, so strong, in exactly the same way that, you know, when you're, you're hungry and you start envisioning dinner, you start, oh yeah, let's just, mm. 
what we're going to have. We're going to have that real nice pizza. We're going to get that real nice food and that fish and chips or whatever. That's so English, isn't it? <laughs> um, we're going to get going to get that nice takeaway in and you start to feel excited and you start to feel your you're salivating and you're like, mm, yeah. The limbic system is appealing to your rational mind with very tempting images of what you would like to eat. It appeals to your mind with these options. Let's have this food, let's have that food. Which is great. That's exactly what it's there for. And it's fantastic. The limbic system appeals to the neocortex. And the neocortex is our rational thinking part. It makes decisions. So the image comes up, have fish and chips, or have pizza. And your neocortex goes with one or the other. Or goes, and this is where it gets difficult, actually no, I'm watching my weight. I'm trying to get leaner, so I'm going to have a salad instead. And the limbic system goes, really? Salad? I thought, yeah, but pizza's nicer because it's got more calories in it. So the limbic system says, yeah, whatever's got more calories in is better for our survival. Neocortex goes, no, I wanted salad because I'm trying to lose some weight. The limbic system goes, nah, forget that. Let's go for the burger. Let's go for the double with the cheese and the bacon and a full fat Coke and a milkshake. And let's get a brownie for dessert. <laughs> It's like it, it won't shut up. It's like, no, I want the salad. Once you've recognised what's happening there, you just ignore any image or thought or feeling that's trying to tempt you towards the other option. You say, you have to be quite stern with yourself. No, it's salad tonight. And that's the end of that. So the limb, that's how the limbic system speaks to you. And I use that example there because everyone can relate to that. Everyone can relate to that. But with alcohol, it's exactly the same. So we might say, right, I am not drinking. I have decided to stop drinking and I am not going to drink again. And the limbic system, because it's confused and believes alcohol is necessary for survival, the limbic system says, yeah, but. They have your favourite alcohol down at the bar and what your friends are there. So, you know, and you start to feel excited. You go, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, I could. Then you're like, no, I, I said I don't want to drink. But then these images start to come up of your favourite drink or emotions start to come up of, oh, yeah, I could, um, it would just be fun. Or nobody will know. Nobody will know if I, you know, I'm on my own, so I can just have a drink and no one's going to ever find out about it. It's the addictive voice. That's it. It's the limbic system trying to appeal to your neocortex saying, yeah, but you have to. Yes, but here are, here's the good things that you can have. And it's so sneaky. It's so sneaky because it will try anything. And it, a common one is, um, well, you might be able to resist tonight, but what about next week? What about the week after? You might as well drink today. Because it just wants it now, now, now. And it just wants more, 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 more. And we even then start to come to believe that we're sick. Because it's like, well, I can't help it. It's just this, the, the addictive voice is very persistent. Very persistent. Very sneaky. And will have you believing all kinds of stuff. If you let it. If you let it. Recognise it. Disregard it. Get on with something else. And it will come... In many different ways, it will sound, it will make you feel deprived if you say, no, I'm not drinking now, I'm going to do something else. And then you will feel, oh, God, yeah, but what am I going to do now? My life is, I'm, I'm devoid of all these little pleasures and all of these things that, oh, I really, um, I just want to enjoy my life and I just want to party. And it's rubbish, rubbish, because it's only making you miserable. It's only destroying your life. It's not adding anything to your life. It's making things far, far worse. And you know that. You know that. It's never helped. Alcohol does not help you. It poisons you. It makes you sick. It makes you depressed. It makes you out of shape. It makes you do stupid things. 
it makes you feel regret, shame, fear, remorse. It makes you feel depressed and anxious, and that is no life. That is no life. Now, you may have always lived with this, so you think, well, what? I don't, I don't know anything else other than this. Well, how are you going to know? How are you going to know unless you knock it on the head for good? I'm here to say, life only gets better once you knock alcohol on the head. Cut it out of your life. Simple, yes. Easy, I know it's another story. I know you're going to have battles going on up here. It's a process of growth. It's a process of change. And change is always going to have an element of pain to it. Because that's how it works. That's how life works. Change can be painful. It's like shedding skin, like a snake shedding its skin. It's going to be uncomfortable. The butterfly emerging from the cocoon, it's an incredibly painful process. But, but, it results in complete freedom. Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to not be waking up hungover? Wouldn't it be nice to not be waking up having to delete messages and... What did I say? What did I do? Wouldn't that be nice? It can happen. It can happen. The limbic system, the old part of the brain, very convincing, but ultimately it can only appeal to your neocortex. You are the one in control. You are the one who is in control control. The deeper part of you can only appeal to your rational nature. Ultimately, you decide your actions. You decide. Nobody else. Nothing else. You. So that's where the AV comes from and what the AV is. So there's not really much else to it. And if I begin to speak any more, it's only giving opportunities for the AV to start start piping up. It'll be quite interesting if I when I watch this video through again, I'll probably be able to notice little times when my own addictive voice is still trying to sort of rear its head a little bit. I'll see. Maybe you've noticed a few little little words or sentences that I've said. Please let me know if I have. It'd be very interesting. I didn't want to speak too disparagingly about Alcoholics Anonymous. However, I will at least explain why it didn't sit too well with me. It's because when I read through the steps, one, there's a lot of spiritual and religious terminology. Ironically, further down the line, I've now become far more spiritual and become less clinical and less atheist. And I've become more spiritual, but without any sort of influence from anywhere else, like, like AA. But at the time, when I read through all of these steps, it's very religious and very um, spiritual in their terminology. And I noticed that none of the steps mention drink. They never say stop drinking. So I thought that was a little strange. I didn't like the atmosphere. Maybe it was just the place that I went was a bad meeting. I don't know. But I'm not going to talk too disparagingly about it because if it works for people, then it works for people. And whatever, whatever. It's got nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me at all. It doesn't work for everyone. And so there has to be some understanding and recognition that not everything works for everybody. And um, this is a very direct way, a very direct way. And actually, this was my first foray into meditation, which has led me down an amazing journey of discovery about my own mind, because it was the first time that I was observing thought. It was the first time that Rather than just being lost in my thought streams, in that very sort of stressed and claustrophobic way, this was the first time that I was taking a step back and observing thoughts and feeling. I didn't realise it at the time, but this is powerful meditation. Powerful meditation. Because you begin to realise that there is a big difference between the thoughts and feelings that arise and you. You can do it. You can. Everyone can. If you wish.
wish to cease your addiction, it can cease today. You say to yourself, I will never drink again and I will never change my mind. You watch the addictive voice rise up, watch it disregard. You are now free, free to live your life however you wish. Whenever it comes up, disregard. Whatever it says, disregard. No matter how powerful, no matter how strong these thoughts are, they are just thoughts. Nothing, 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 nothing. It can only appeal to your decision. Your decision is yours alone. If you choose to go and take a drink, then you've chosen to go and take a drink. It was your choice. You chose to do it. So simple. Such a, such a tricky thing to try and describe as well. I'm sure you can understand why it's, why it's been hard to make this video. Um, for one thing, I don't particularly... <laughs> I don't like laying my entire past out because I'm trying to distance myself from this past and this story. And it opens me up to criticism. I, I imagine... If there's people out there who are in AA, or they'll be like, nah, 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 nah. and there are people who watch this channel who don't have my best interests at heart. Everyone thinks that when I make a video or a post or something, like, is that about me? Are you saying that about me? No. It's weird. I don't know how many more videos I'm going to do, if I'm going to do it, but... So that's, that's why I wanted to do this video, because I feel like not many people recover from alcoholism as severe as I had it. There aren't that many people that do it. And I feel like if I didn't say what happened to me, I would be leaving something unsaid. Because it's such a powerful technique. It's such a simple technique. And... I'll just I'll just say what I struggle with because I'm on a journey of discovery in which I'm trying to distance myself from my past. I'm trying to distance myself from my ego. And so making videos, because there's this like and dislike thing and this view counter, and making these posts and things, it's very easy to start getting drawn into. And so I feel like for the next stage of my development, my spiritual development, is to leave this idea that I have to explain things to other people, that I have to come and save everyone. Because they each have their own each have their own journey and they have to find their own way. And I feel like the more posts that I do, the more videos that I do, the more it exposes me and opens me up to criticism and then I get very dragged into that personal identity and that therefore that then leads to ego. So it's difficult, it's difficult and that's why I don't do many videos and I don't do many posts and yet what I struggle with is that I know that naturally my natural inclination is towards teaching and my natural inclination is towards coaching and I've always been quite one of the gifts I've had is that I find it quite easy to utilize vocabulary and I find it quite easy to speak to people and speak to groups of people there's many many things that I'm very terrible at <laughs> I'm awful at but one of my little gifts that I seem to have arrived with naturally is the ability to speak and teach and coach and speak to groups of people. So this is what I struggle with. Because wouldn't I be leaving something unsaid that could be of great value and great benefit to the world if I get it right? And yet the more I do this, the more I feel 
like I'm missing the point and that I'm actually hindering and undermining my own spiritual development. Anyway, that's a video for another time if I do one. Alcohol. Say to yourself, I will never drink again and I will never change my mind. And really do it. Really believe it. You can do it. The AV rises up and says, you'll never be able to do this and it's not that simple and he's just talking rubbish. It'll say all of this, all of this. But there's another part of you. There is a part of you that says, what if? What if? What if he really means it? What if it is that simple? What if? Isn't that a lovely feeling? Freedom, lightness, joy, energy, optimism, hope and positivity. That's the real you. That's the real you. The part of you that wants what's best for you. Leave all of that negativity and all of that addiction in the past. I will never drink again and I will never change my mind.